Hello everybody, let's get straight to it. In this video, we will walk you through a step-by-step -step configuration that is needed to integrate Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operation, which is former IX ERP, and Dynamics 365 for Sales. That integration was released by Microsoft in July 2019. It was in private preview as of uh, May 2019. That integration is built on top of the Common Data Service, CDS, and we will show you how to configure both uh, your sales operation, uh, sales application as well as that FMO operation. That uh, uh, integration kind of promises us a fairly real-time integration uh, between two applications. So let's get straight to it. Let's just go through the process step by step. So the first thing we need to do according to the manual is actually go and set up that system uh, client ID. So we're going to copy that client ID from the manual. We're going to create a new user under Azure Active Directory applications in the FNO site. And of course, we need to specify the user that will be used to run that uh, application. Once that is done, we have to confirm that we have all the standard data entities uh, already configured and created in our NFO, FNO instance. So we're going to navigate to data management workspace for that, click on data entities, and here's a list of all the entities. Once that is done, we have to navigate to the virtual machine that runs our FNO instance, and we have to open the management studio to run an SQL script. That is done to enable uh, the functionality because it's still protected by flooding. So in order to uh, preview certain new functionality that is not yet available to general public, we have to go and execute uh, an SQL script to uh, make, make it available, right? So I'm just gonna copy that SQL script in here. I'm gonna run the job. Once that is done, we have to go and restart our IS server and that is done using the common prompt right here. So that that is completed. Then I will copy the link that is specified in the manual, and then I will log in using my credentials, and then I have to accept all the permissions that I needed for that application to function properly. So here I just granted the access to FMO application. So now we're moving on to the CE side. So the first thing we need to do is download that prospect to cache uh, for the Dynamics 365 application from the app source. So I'm just gonna log in. And once you log in, you then, basically have to have enough uh, privileges, you have to basically be a system admin to install that application, that solution in your CE instance. So here I have to select the organization which will be used uh, for that install and then accept all the terms. Once that is done, I will navigate to the solution management in my admin uh, center in the CE application. You see all the solutions that have been deployed in that specific organization. And I think I'm just gonna go to the last step right here and we will see that it's pending installation right now, our prospect to cache solution. Here it is. Installation, installation is pending. Once that time has passed, we now see it has been installed successfully. And now we need to actually go into the CE application itself and we have to configure the user and the team. Uh, so we will then go and open the go into the security section, navigate to the users, and then we're going to click new. And the, uh, the manual clearly states that you have to set up an application user. So first, I will just go to the list of all, of all the application users. Then I'm going to click on you. And then once you are there, you have to make sure that you switch to the application user again. So you just click on users here and select application users. From there on, you just copy that application ID that is specified in the manual and copy that in application ID field for the new user. Uh, from there on, if you just go and look at the screenshot that was provided in the manual, I'm just gonna uh, name that user as AXDU, do a write. Um, and then I will just have to specify an email address and the username will be generated automatically. Right. Uh, once we're there, the next step would be to actually go and assign that brand user to a system administrator role. So we're gonna save the record, we're gonna click on manage roles and we're gonna assign that user system admin role, as I said. From there on, we're done with the user. Uh, what I will do here is uh, basically go and set up a brand new team. Right? You will see here that um, in the team, we would not, did not necessarily, here I'm just setting up, adding myself to uh, an admin, which is uh, a relevant step to this application. So let's go back to the team. And what I'm doing here is basically uh, creating a brand new team. It was not really clear from the manual should I create a new team or that team should be created automatically. In this case, I'm just creating a brand new team. Uh, and then what I'm doing here is I'm adding that brand new user that I just created to that team. You can see it here in the, uh, in the right section. And then of course, 
uh, following the manual, I'm assigning the system administrator role to the entire team, which has only just one user. Again, I'm just following the script here. Well, then we're just moving on to the third section, which is back to FNO, and then we're going to link uh, our uh, link application to using uh, CDS, right? So in this case, I will walk through the step, the process here. I'm selecting organization on the CE side, <clears throat> which is the pro process is very similar to what we had in the Power Apps uh, to create this integration project. The next step is to select a legal entity on FNO side. So now I have a pair of two organizations. And then I have to decide which uh, entities I will use uh, to synchronize between those two instances. So I'm selecting customers you know, on FNO side and accounts on a CE side. And then I'm basically after modifying some mapping, I'm starting that uh, starting that job. And now to demonstrate the whole process, I'm going back to FNO side. I'm creating that brand new user, brand new customer called new test. And once that user is saved, I will go back into my sales application I look at the list of my accounts. I'm going to refresh and then uh, we should see our DU test user right away. So that's basically almost real time. It's fairly good, right? There was no delay in uh, getting that record created. Now we can see that it's a fairly bare record. I did not uh, map a lot of fields, but I see the account number has a bunch of zeros and 10. And that's basically an account number that came from a number sequence that is responsible for generating customer numbers uh, and FNO site. We can see that in the top left corner right here. And uh, the last thing I would like to show you is that it's a strictly FNO site, but basically we have configured it to use a global number sequence that is responsible for generating customer numbers across all legal entities in the same instance of FNO site. All right, so let's move on to the conclusion then. So uh, I think it's a fairly good start from Microsoft on uh, coming up with an integration that works fairly well out of the box. Uh, I, had to mine, I had to do minor tweaks to the mapping between the customers V3 and the accounts uh, to make it all work. Uh, it's a fairly robust uh, solution because it allows you to use your custom data entities. It allows you to modify the standard existing data entities. It allows you to do the transformations before you do the mapping. So it's a very similar to what we had available under Admin Center in the Power Apps where you have those integration projects configured. But the only difference is it did not work uh, for me on the Power Apps side, but it kind of wor it worked for me uh, fairly easily uh, using that integration through CDS. So uh, as I said, I think it's a good start for Microsoft. Good job. Um, I hope you found that video uh, useful and interesting and until the next time.